So it says in a particular region of space, so it's giving us a, a, some electric potential as a function of coordinates, x, y, and z. Okay. Um, and then it says, asks, what is the electric field in the region? Mm. Presumably as a function of x, y, and z. And it's asking. Now, as you're looking at it, if you feel a bit lost, that's fine. Uh, there isn't going to be any electric field formulas that you can look up. And um, there isn't even a charge distribution that you can, um, you know, you can apply some of the methods uh, you learned in the text in, in the lecture to um, use. And it's because this question is meant to teach you one very specific um, definition or rather uh, since you should have learned the definition already, teach you the application of that definition. So let me give you a quick reminder of the definition that whose knowledge will help you do this question. It's the definition of voltage. When we define the voltage, or more specifically, voltage difference from point A to B, it was defined in this way. It was um, defined through a line integral, an electric field, dot product with a line element. So you imagine doing this integral over some path. And this uh, line element is an infinitesimal division of that path. You um, And I almost always forget this minus sign. There's a minus sign there for some reason. <laughs> and you integrate this from point A to point B. And that is how we define ele uh, electric potential in terms of this uh, fundamental quantity of electric field. And um, one of the things about electric potential is that it doesn't matter how you uh, choose this path from A to B, as long as the end points are the same, the end result will always be the same. Uh, that's the property of electric field being a conservative field. Now, with all that, uh, that doesn't directly help you answer this question because it's asking you for electric field and not voltage. Um, this is where you have to know the inverse relationship uh, between these two. There's an inverse version of this relationship. And if I may briefly use uh, multivariable calculus notation, which you are supposed to be taking alongside of this class, um, this is what I would say the inverse relationship is. Electric field is, and you can almost guess um, in what way this inverse is related. The, um, so, you know, here you are doing an integration. An inverse of integration operation is the differentiation operation. So you have to do a differentiation here. Now, uh, the thing to mind is that it's a multivariable stuff. So the multivariable version of differentiation here is what's called a gradient. And I will uh, soon explain what that gradient stands for. And there's this minus sign, same minus sign there. So electric field is gradient of the voltage as a function of x, y, and z. And in some sense, other than this uh, specification of coordinate variables, this is a coordinate independent expression. It's a coordinate independent vector equation. So what it really stands for is a set of three equations, which can be uh, written in some given coordinate. Um, you could do this in spherical coordinate if you wanted to, except that in spherical coordinate, this uh, gradient operation becomes super complicated. In the partition coordinate system, it's relatively simple. So I can just write it down. So this one equation, it stands for these three equations in the Cartesian coordinate. So in the Cartesian coordinates, I'm dealing with X component of um, electric field, the Y component of electric field, and the Z component of electric field. And what this is telling me is uh, the gradient operator, uh, it's defined this way. Um, now, the way the operators are defined, it's uh, maybe a little bit um, not quite intuitive. Operators are one of those things that only gain concrete meaning when you act on a function with it. it this stands for a 
differentiation operator. So uh, you see I'm doing differentiation here. These are partial derivatives, remember that. <laughs> now, um, it's written as a vector quantity because each of these operators are associated with a vector component. So, um, so I can uh, split it up, split up this right hand side the same way I split up the left hand side with the x, y, z component. So uh, reading this carefully, then what this must mean is my x component of electric field is equal to minus times the derivative with respect to let me get rid of the times that looks weird. <laughs> minus one times uh, derivative with respect to x of the electric potential uh, as a function of x, y, and z. And as you are taking the partial derivative, you treat y and z as being constant, but you still leave them in there. Electric field in the y direction is minus partial derivative with respect to y of the same electric potential. Electric field in the z direction is minus of the partial derivative with respect to z of the same electric potential. So this is the, um, you could do, well, I guess I wouldn't just call this a definition on the technicality. Um, you <laughs> Because uh, we started out by defining electric field. And so then you can't define electric field in terms of potential. It's a circular definition. Um, although uh, there's a one way in which it's uh, much uh, better to define electric field in this way then rather than the other way around. I'll mention that uh, after I give you the answer for this. So with this knowledge in hand, this is actually pretty easy question to answer then. It's basically a differentiation question. You take this expression here, take the derivatives with respect to uh, x, y, and z, and put them in right there. So uh, let me take the derivative with respect to x. That will give me my x component and not forget the minus sign, then I think I can just do this in my head. It's going to be minus 8xyz squared. Uh, these are being treated as constant, minus um, uh, plus. I have the minus sign from before, uh, multiplying to that. Um, 5 times 2, so 10xy. It's going to be my x component. Let me do my y component. Uh, y has um, it's a linear factor, so it's going to be minus, not forgetting the minus sign, 4x squared, z squared, my plus with the one additional minus sign, uh, 5x squared, and the z component. The second term has no, uh, does not result in any z component, so I only have first term to worry about. It's going to be minus 8 x squared y and then this two came down that's why that's eight <laughs> uh, t. all right um that uh, let me plug in the answers make sure that's graded as correct and then um say the piece i was gonna say minus x y g squared plus 10 x y um oof, uh, the my open method is pretty forgiving about uh, not explicitly specifying the multiplications It'll, because it knows what variables I have, it'll kind of infer um, the, the, when I have a, like, when I write x, y, it'll realize that I mean x times y. So that's why I can type it, things in this way. Um, sometimes in different systems, you have to be more careful because in different systems, they might not know how to figure out what y, g is. Is it a variable y, g or is it y times g? Um, so anyways. This is one of those where it, it kind of matches your expectation. So yeah, that's a, so once you know what to do, it's a pretty simple question. And what I want you to end the coverage of this question by uh, with a saying is, um, so I was saying that uh, this uh, way of specifying electric field is almost more convenient. And there's a reason for that. So in this question, you saw them do this. They just basically gave you an arbitrary voltage or arbitrary function as a voltage and then asked you to find the electric field. Now, um, if you think about this too much or I guess 
just the right amount of time, you might think of, hmm, can I do that in reverse? As in, can I specify arbitrary function uh, for the electric field and then ask someone to find the voltage given these electric fields? And what I'm here to tell you is that if you want to specify electric field as some arbitrary function that you can think of, then um, you do not have a guarantee that the electric field you will come up with will be a physically valid electric field. As in um, the question of, could you come up with some charge distribution that will generate the electric field you thought of? With a random arbitrary electric field, that's not the case. With a voltage, uh, this is uh, uh, guaranteed to be valid. As in, you can think of some charge distribution that will generate this exact voltage. The distinction between voltage and electric field, it's the distinction that we are in, we will be in a much better place to talk about at the end of this semester. Um, with the electric field, there's going to be something that we call Maxwell's equations. And what Maxwell's equations amount to is they are constraining equations for electric and magnetic fields. So when you choose electric and magnetic fields, you have to choose them carefully so that they satisfy Maxwell's equations. Now, when you choose the voltage or electric potential as a scalar function and define electric field this way, this is automatically guaranteed to satisfy one of the Maxwell's equations, uh, meaning Gauss's law. Um, so, so that's why you can go in this direction. You first uh, define the voltage and having defined the voltage, then find the electric field that is always guaranteed to work and it's uh, physically meaningful because um, uh, defining electric field in this way will guarantee that it satisfies Maxwell's equations or Gauss's law, the one you've learned. So, um, yeah, so, so there's a lot of uh, theoretical ground to, to go in here, but I'll uh, end it here so that I don't spend forever on this one relatively easy question. Easy once you know what, is, what exactly it is that they want you to do.